What up guys, Joey Kim here, and in the last video that I did was during the Nativity Fast, which has been several months ago now, and I have uh, been hard at work with school and teaching school and a variety of other things. So I have not been uh, fresh on the YouTubes, I guess. So um, I wanted to make a video today though. I had a few things I wanted to share with you guys, uh, just related to, you know, the season and things that are going on. We Today was the beginning of the Lenten fast. So uh, in, I know in Greece, uh, when you have the, uh, the Sunday. Uh, before that, we call it me uh, Cheese Fair Sunday because we, we get rid of all our cheese. They usually call it Carnival uh, or Carnival. And uh, then today in Greece is called Clean Monday because you're, you begin the process of cleaning your body out of all of the animal products. Um, there are, you know, things like fish and seafood and, um, you know, a few things that, you know, some people might consider animal products. But uh, apart from those, it's all plant plant foods uh, for the next 40 days and then an additional the week uh, leading up to the uh, to Pascha. And so it is a time of fasting and preparation uh, for the resurrection and uh, the, the meeting of Christ in the tomb. And that is the most holy day in the liturgical calendar of the church of Christianity is the, the Pascha, the, the resurrection of Christ, Easter, as it's called uh, usually in Western churches. So I want to take a step back, though, to the Saturday night Vespers that comes before um, the, the days that I just mentioned. And just from this past Saturday, if you're seeing this in the, the near future. So uh, this was from Saturday, March 5th, according to the 2022 calendar. And uh, there are these areas, I think, uh, in, I think in Western Rite, maybe in Eastern Rite churches too, I think they're called um, propers. And they are the changing, the way that the, the, the liturgical calendar changes, the way prayers change throughout the season. And uh, sometimes the prayers don't change, but the service itself changes. If you go to like Vespers, you'll hear uh, some of those red, uh, you'll hear like the Stahira. And I don't know if the, the tones after that are also considered the Stahira, um, but I, I know, you know, in some prayer books, at least they're called propers. Um, but, you know, there's one uh, that we read on this day, and it has to do with repentance. So we are leading towards a time of repentance, which we are now in. We actually had the first, I just got home from church a little bit ago. And uh, there's all kinds of uh, readings from the First Testament or the, the Old Testament, the First Testament. And it, it details these people that sinned and it, um, you know, or they're, they're in a lowly estate. They, they're, you know, in trouble like uh, Joseph when he's in the pit. It compares his pit as like a, a foreshadowing of, of the, the tomb that Christ goes into um, before the resurrection. And, but to not, but the, the one from this past Saturday, uh, you know, is leading towards that. It's, it's coming from somewhere. And I, I think that it expresses some deep theology. I, I often will hear um, some like Protestant people talk about uh, losing the hymns of the church. But um, so I think sometimes they don't realize that those hymns that they sing, that those were replacing much more ancient and much more theologically um, sound and theologically deep uh, hymns or, or propers, as I'm calling them here, or tones. And those were the original church. Uh, these hymns that they're referencing, you know, they're largely American hymns. And, and America's only 244 years old. So, um, you know, there's this thing sometimes in, in the church, you know, in America, they'll talk about, you know, things that are old and it's only a couple hundred years old. Uh, when, you know, in, in the Orthodox Church and then probably also in Western uh, churches that are, are very old, like the Catholic Church or the Anglican Church, maybe. I'm, I'm not so familiar with Anglicanism. I'm only, like, you know, so-so familiar with Catholicism. But, you know, definitely within Orthodoxy, when we talk about, you know, things that are old or ancient, it is referencing back to 2,000 years ago. It is usually looking to the 1st and 2nd, 3rd century maybe the fourth century, we talk about John Chrysostom or some of those um, church fathers that are really 
um, drew people to a state of repentance. But related to that, a lot of those uh, writings, a lot of those things, they're sung in the church. And so we sing this uh, part. It talks about the creation. It talks about the fall. It talks about uh, Adam and Eve in the garden and their sin. Um, then it says that the Lord took a handful of dust from the earth. He breathed into it and created me a living man. He made me Lord and master of all things on earth. Truly, I enjoyed the life of the angels. But Satan the deceiver tempted me in the guise of a serpent. I ate the forbidden fruit and forfeited the glory of God. So it is talking of Eden. Oh, my compassionate Lord, call me back to Eden. Um, but then he goes on to what I think is a very important thing for us to understand. He says uh, in a few lines later, I exchanged the glory of my mortal body for shame and nakedness. Now I must wear garments of skins and fig leaves. And I think uh, the way that I heard it taught when I attended a Protestant church, and, and most certainly the way that I understood it uh, previously, I think most people understand, is that when God gives them garments of skin, we usually assume that God gave them, um, you know, like the animal skins. Like he like slaughtered, he killed some animal and he used that can animal to cover Adam and Eve. And maybe that is part of it. Um, but... You know, the way that I hear this now, I, I think I start to realize that he says, I must wear garments of skins. It's talking about these skins, you know, the skins that we wear on our body. Um, because he says, I exchange the glory of my mortal body for shame and nakedness. And, you know, Adam and Eve, they saw that they were naked in the garden. I don't know, that they, they obviously didn't know that previously. Um, and maybe they weren't naked previously, but... Um, you know, I think that what we can understand from that and what I've heard taught from Orthodox teachers and what I see reflected in the hymns of the church, the, the uh, propers and the, um, the ancient church writings is that it is because of these skins that one, on one hand, that we experience the passions, we experience a temptation, we experience difficulty and challenges, but it is also because of these sins that we are able to repent, that we are able to enter this time of fasting and prayer as we lead towards the Pascha, and that we are able to repent. The angels, uh, by contrast, are unable to repent of their sins. Satan and, and those fallen angels that have... Uh, been removed from the presence of God, they are unable, they are fixed in this state that they exist in. They are unable uh, to seek repentance or to be drawn back to um, communion with Christ. And we, because of these skins that that are, are you know, that leave us, you know, lower than the angels, that leave us, you know, in a way lower than all of the heavenly host, we are able to find repentance, though, because of that. And through that, we are able to be conformed into the image of Christ through this process of repentance, through turning to Christ, through prayer, through fasting, uh, through saying the prayers of the church, through participation in Holy Communion, through all of the mysteries of the church, through marriage, uh, through um, reading scripture, through all of those things, through charity, through giving, through... Uh, you know, every good deed that we do. Um, so, you know, especially according to, you know, there's a passage that talks about the the separation of the lambs and the goats, and it was things that they did that separated them. So he said, when I was naked, you fed, you, <laughs> when I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. So we can't ever uh, deceive ourselves by thinking that doing good deeds in that way is is un, unimportant or that it's uh you know it's not part of salvation you know being part you know salvation is um conforming to the image of christ and conforming to the image of christ is to do all of all of those things so um, i think those things are very important and if you you know disagree then i i think in a way like you you would have a hard time with some of those passages of scripture that talk about that but that is all for today. I hope you guys are well. Maybe it won't be so several months before I do another video, um, but I wanted to get that one out and just uh, 
say you know a few things about repentance and how you know we are really blessed to have these garments of skin that allows us to come to repentance in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen